So anyways, I guess we'll get started. My name is Maria Heidel. I am um, the Chief Credit Officer at Portage Community Bank right down the street on 59 in Ravenna. And I am also a financial literacy instructor through Junior Achievement um, that I've gotten a chance to participate in for the first time. Um, nice thing is about small classes, we can kind of tailor it to meet your needs. It's your class, not mine. I'm just here to help you learn whatever you want to learn. So we'll keep this informal. If you have any questions as I'm going through anything, feel free to stop me. And um, I promise if I can't answer something, I will get you an answer um, after the class if you give me some contact information. So my topic today is understanding credit scores and credit reports. Um, kind of a big thing, especially if you're interested in borrowing, but you'll see as we go through this presentation that good credit scores can play a role in other aspects of your life as well that you may not initially think of. So we'll kind of go through that. I'm going to apologize in advance with the contrast that you can't really see um, this too well. It is running up over here. If it, if it makes sense for you to walk over here, if you can't see something, please feel free to go ahead. Again, this is your class, not mine. I just hope I can get you um, some information that you are looking for to get. Okay? So let's talk first about what is credit. So best definition I can explain it is credit is the ability to borrow money or access goods or services with the understanding that you will pay it back at a, an agreed upon time. So lenders, merchants, and service providers, which are collectively known as creditors, give you credit based on their belief that you will pay back what you borrowed along with any finance charges or interest that you agreed to, okay? Um, so that's really the best definition I can, I've, I've got to kind of explain that. It basically comes down to they evaluate the credit score as an indicator of how risky you are, okay? So let's talk about the different types of credit. Um, we can talk about home loans, for example. Maybe that's a loan to purchase your first house, um, or it might be a home equity loan that you're looking to borrow some equity from, from your property to finance other things. Automobile loans, I think we kind of all understand how those all work. Um, auto dealerships, go ahead and run your credit to uh, see if you'd be a good risk. We've got uh, student loans, personal loans. We have other installment loans, maybe for appliances or furniture. We have um, store credit. Maybe you know if you go into a, a retailer, they'll offer you a credit um, card to, bar, to, to buy at their, at their uh, particular, um, particular business. And then we have maybe a revolving credit, like a credit card, which I think, I think we all kind of know what those are. So what is a credit report? Credit report is an in-depth record of how you've managed your credit over time. So it's basically a statement. It's got information about what activity you've had, how much you've borrowed, at what terms, and the current credit situation, and your ability to pay back and the status of your open accounts. How many of you have ever gotten a, a copy of a credit report? Okay, how did, how did you get it? Did you just request it from the bureaus or? Um, I did that and then I did that. I can't remember. Cre right, credit card. Apparently there's like, they all come three of them. Exactly, exactly. Um, I, I cannot stress how important it is if you haven't gotten a credit report to do that. Um, you want to do that before you actually have the need to borrow money and apply for credit because sometimes, as we'll talk about in a later bit, they are inaccurate. There's human error that goes into that. Um, the worst situation is when you're at a point where you have to apply for credit and lo and behold, they pull it up and you find out that there's something that's, that's holding you back that's not accurate. Okay. Okay, so... Again, let's talk about who uses credit reports. We talked about the different forms of um, credit before. Credit card companies. We have the banks and the credit unions. We have the automobile and mortgage lenders. Landlords. Do you ever think about that? Landlords a lot of times will pull your credit if you want to rent an apartment. 
Utility companies, a lot of times we'll, we'll run a credit report. Cell phone companies, if you're signing up for a plan. Insurance companies, a lot of times rates are dependent on um, what your credit score is. Sometimes employers. Um, I work in financial services. Every bank I've ever worked at has pulled my credit. Um, I'm handling money. It's pretty important that they get a good handle how I handle my personal funds as an indicator as how I'm going to handle somebody else's. And then um, sometimes licensing bodies will, will pull it, make sure that you know there's nothing out there that would indicate um, that you don't manage your credit well that might impact your ability to operate within the parameters of the license. And then certain business loans and leases, especially small business loans, if you're a sole proprietor or a closely held business, basically you as a person are one and same with your business, so they're, they're going to go ahead and take a look at what your personal credit is. Okay? Can they and do that without you knowing it? No, you have to give consent for it. Okay. Um, any questions? Again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that uh, this isn't working for me. This isn't quite how I was hoping to run this, but we'll, we'll keep going with it. Um, so again, what is a credit score? Credit score is a number that basically rates your credit worthiness, okay? Higher the score, better credit risk you're considered. We'll see in a little bit, though, that there's a lot of things that go, don't go into that credit score that maybe honestly should. Um, but it is kind of the standard that most creditors use when evaluating a person for credit, okay? So like it or not, I particularly don't like the way credits scored, but it's just kind of something that we have to deal with. So again, my, my goal today is to tell you about as much as you can do to manage that score so that you can have the best possible outcome when it comes to getting credit. Okay. So credit score is based on your personal history. There's a lot of things that go into it. First and foremost, it'll take a look at the number of open accounts. Okay. But here's what's strange about that. Um, what is the ideal number of open accounts? It's kind of unknown. You know, a person that has one open account, you would think, okay, they don't like to borrow much, so possibly they're, they're a good credit risk. But a lot of times, the bureaus want to see more than one open account because with one open account, that's not a lot of data to make a score on. Even though you would think, okay, that person's not borrowing much, you know, maybe they're just managing their credit responsibly, but it doesn't quite work that way. They'll take a look at how long the accounts have been open. I will tell you that once you get your report, if you're ever deciding to close an account, be very careful that you don't close your oldest accounts because the age of your overall accounts is a very big factor that goes into the, the model of credit scoring, okay? I have um, a, a credit card that my husband and I have had longer than I care to admit, over 30 years. Even though we may not use that account that much, you can better believe I'm never going to close that account because if I were to do so, my average age of all of my accounts would drop a lot, which would not help my score. So you have to be a little bit strategic about, about managing, managing your accounts. They'll take a look at the total levels of debt, you know, with the idea that you want to have some borrowings, but you don't want to be completely maxed out on all of your obligations, okay? Your repayment history, that's a biggie. Have you paid back everything according to the terms of the individual credit? Very big. That's probably the biggest factor out there. And then lenders will use credit scores, again, to evaluate the likelihood that you will repay loans or other debt on time, okay? So there's three companies out there that provide credit reports, okay? Typically, when you get your credit report, you will have scores from all three of these companies um, giving you a score. Typically, they move together, but they may not always. Um, and that can be for a number of reasons. Sometimes. If that particular, if, if one particular obligation that you have isn't reported one month to the particular bureau, they won't pick up on it. Um, and that does happen from time to time. So the three main companies 
It's TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Those are the three. Um, again, all three will be looked at if you're going for a home loan or some other type of credit. So all this, the scores that these three companies generate is basically called an algorithm. Has anyone ever heard that word before, algorithm? So basically an algorithm is a set of steps that generate a result, okay? Now I'll be honest with you, sometimes when I look at credit scores, I really just think it's a black box. But there's actually some kind of rhyme or reason to it. And while each of the three bureaus do have their own algorithms, they all kind of include the same the same factors, okay? Although the score is a little bit different. So typically, on average, the payment history is about 35% of your score. Okay? Remember I said it was a big that was a big one. The amounts owed, another big one, about 30% of your score. The length of credit history. Remember what I said about being careful, don't close your oldest accounts because that could impact the length of your history. New credit. They like to see a mix of credit and they like to see that you're still actively borrowing, um, not just borrowing that you got maybe 20 years ago. And then the mix of credit. Typically the algorithm likes to see you know, mortgage borrowings, credit cards, kind of a variety of different things to kind of get at your score. Even though, let's face it, if you don't have a home loan, you're just simply not gonna have that type of borrowing. And you can still have a good, good score even without it. Okay, any questions? Okay, so what's considered a good score? Again, there's, there, there's various algorithms out there, but generally the scores run from about 250 to 850 with eight, anything above 800 being a, a very, very good score. Um, there, are, there are score ranges that lenders will use when um, evaluating credit. Typically 750 above is considered excellent. Anything from 700 to 749 is good. 650 to 699 is considered fair. 550 to 649 is poor, and then under 550 is less than desirable. Um, so again, I highly recommend you get your, your, your credit score, be familiar with it, learn the strategies that it, that can, that it can take to get your score um, improved. You had mentioned Credit Karma. That's an excellent source of free credit information. It's updated, I think, weekly. Um, and they, I think they even have a score simulator where you can kind of tell it, okay, if I were to pay down this amount of debt, what would that do to the score? So that can be a very helpful tool to use. It's completely free. Okay. So let's talk about what's not included in a credit score because a lot of people don't quite understand this. First of all, it, the score does not include any information about what's in your checking or savings account balance. It is a score based only on debt. It does not consider what your resources are, which to me, I've always kind of had a problem with that because, you know, if it's just a measure of debt but it doesn't have the offset of how much you've got there to support that debt, you know, what does it really mean? But the credit companies didn't ask me when they were coming up with this. Does not include the amount of your personal income. Kind of an important factor when determining, you know, what a person can afford. And granted, too, the, uh, Mortgage companies, if you apply for a mortgage, will definitely take a look at, at these items, even if the credit score doesn't, doesn't include that. How much, if you have any stocks or bonds, that doesn't play a role at all. Brokerage accounts, same thing. Any other personal assets that you own, houses, cars, anything like that is not factored into your score. It's solely how much debt you have. So what else is not included in the score? Does not include anything about race, color, religion, national origin, sex, and marital status. So it's completely a number based on debt. No other factors involved. Your age does not have um, any bearing at all on your score. 
your salary, your occupation, your employer, how long you've been with your employment, your employer or employment history does not play a role. Where you live does not apply. Any interest rate being charged does not play a factor at all. So if you're being charged a very high interest rate, that's not going to go into your score. The amount of the payment will, but not the actual interest rate. Okay. Any items such as child family support obligations does, do not show up. So if you're obligated to pay child, child support, that's not going to show up on a credit report. Whether or not you are participating in credit counseling of any kind does not show up. And certain types of inquiries request for your credit report. Okay. So let's talk about how you can improve your credit score. First and foremost, get a copy of your score, or as Lisa, you said, sign on to a service such as Credit Karma so that you can continually monitor your score. I will tell you, I check Credit Karma every week. Um, not just for my payment records, which, which I know are good, but also to see if there's any fraud out there. Um, my class does not cover fraud, but obviously I think we all know that fraud in financial services plays a bigger and bigger role right now with data breaches and everything else. You need to make sure that there's nothing out there that's hurting your score because of that. Okay. If you see any errors, dispute them. If you see that credit card company thinks that you're late one month and you know you're not, call them up. There's a process. They have to at least hear you and then uh, hopefully get that corrected because that can make a big difference. Use caution whenever you make big credit card purchases. Um, I know credit cards are very convenient, but your score will go down if you start utilizing your credit cards higher up to the max. I know a lot of people will say, well, I like to use my credit card because I get points. And I understand that's certainly an incentive to use it, but keep in mind that if, it, if you wind up maxing your credit card up to the higher and higher limits, it will bring your score down. Okay? Pay off any past due account balances. Very, very important. You may not have an immediate impact on your score, but granted over time, it will help bring your score back up again. Okay? Pay down debt which will bring down what they call the utilization rate or the percentage of credit that you're actually using. Okay. And then be very cautious whenever opening a new account. Let's face it, we all get the advertisements, get you know, $50 off with your first purchase if you open a credit card. And again, certainly very um, enticing, very attractive, but Having more accounts can hurt your score in the long run, kind of making that $50 freebie or whatever not really being such a good deal. Okay? And then keep older accounts open whenever possible. And we talked about that. And be patient and persistent. Um, it's a process. It would, it would be great if we could just go ahead and magically do these things and see our scores go up by 100 points. In reality, it takes months. Um, Patience and persistence is key. It will get better. Okay. So you are entitled to get a free credit report from all three of the um, reporting agencies once every 12 months from each of them. Okay. Um, and again, I'm happy to share this PowerPoint, which does tell you how you get that, either going online, phone call, or a mail request. But you, you're entitled to get those each and every year, and I recommend you do so. Um, there's also some special cases where you can also get a free credit report. You can get a free report if you get a notice of adverse action, which if you get a notice that you are denied for credit, you are entitled to see a copy of the report that led to the denial. Okay, And I encourage anyone who's in that circumstance to get that because errors happen. Um, you should at least be aware of what contributed to you being denied, even if it was truly legitimate. Okay. Also, too, sometimes insurance companies will do this. They may change your rate because your credit score drops. If you get a notice that your car insurance rate is going up because of that, I would encourage you to get a copy of your credit report to see what made that happen. Do they tell, have to tell you that that's why your rate's going up? I believe if you see a rate going up, you should ask, hey, was it because of my credit? 
um, they, they need to be able to tell you that. I'm not sure if they actually notify you. Unfavorable changes in your insurance cover, again, we just talked about that. Changes in terms of your employment or license or government benefit, you're entitled to a report. Um, if you get an adverse action notice, you have to ask for the report within 60 days of getting the notice. So don't wait too long, okay? If you believe that you had fraud, we just talked about fraud. If you think that there's been a data breach and um, your score's been impacted by fraud, you're entitled to a copy of your report. If you've requested a report from a credit company in connection with placing a fraud alert, you may get a copy of your report. If you're an unemployed and you intend to apply for employment within 60 days of the date of a request. So again, as I said earlier, some employers do pull credit. Um, if you're unemployed and you know you're going to be job hunting, go ahead and get a copy of that report. Again, for the same reason, you want to anticipate any negative things that are out there so that you can hopefully at least answer to them so that hopefully it doesn't stop you from getting the job that you want. All right? And also if you're a recipient of public welfare assistance. So let's talk about tr credit history. Um, again, you're looking to start credit history. You can, have a you can ask a family member to give you access to their card as an authorized user. Even if you're not technically on the account, um, if you're an authorized user, it will build your credit history. When my oldest daughter turned 18, we went and had her added as a user onto our credit card for that reason, so she can start building a history for herself. Um, obviously, whoever gives you the credit, you don't want to, you, you want to completely be honest and upfront with what you're purchasing. Um, you don't want to take advantage of that because that can lead to difficult relationships. But it is a wonderful way to at least start your credit history there. Um, get utility bills in your name and pay them on time. You, sometimes you can get what they call a secured credit card, where it's secured by a deposit balance. Obviously, it would be great to not have to put that forward, but you know, if you, if you can afford to do so, I recommend doing it because that builds your credit history up as well, too. Okay. Have a family member agree to co-sign a credit card or loan. Um, again, you just need to be respectful of them because if you pay it late, not only will it hurt your credit score, it'll hurt theirs as well. So they might not be too happy with you if you don't pay it back. Okay. Any questions? Is the commercial look for Experian where they're like, you know, Netflix, if you pay your Netflix account, that will, like, that will boost your credit. Is that like something? Is that like you know, I'm not sure about that. It must be me that Netflix is reporting. Like it's like accounts. so different, and yeah, you can just boost your, and if you don't, if it doesn't help you, you can take them back off again. And you know, they must be reporting now. Um, I would certainly welcome that. That's another way to, to boost your credit score. Um, I don't know. That I'll have to look a little bit more into that. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, again, I can't stress enough how important it is to pull your scores. Um, either through Credit Karma or through one of the bureaus. Mm -hmm. So important, because they do mess up. I, it's hard for me as a lender, you know, I'll get someone who unfortunately hasn't watched their score as much as they should, and then trying to get them alone and try to help them get around those dings that they might have, um, that can be really hard and a challenge. So, any other questions? So you're all gonna go get some copies of your report now? <coughs> I, I, I actually tried and I got, I, I think it was like an application to do it like on paper and I'm like, well, why did I try to go to the website to get it done? Okay. Like, yeah. Definitely the website. And again, Credit Karma is a wonderful service too. Um, I'm probably going to try that next. It's not the official score, but it is a good indicator. Um, I've always found mine to be accurate when I compare it to the actual report. So that's definitely, um, that's definitely something pretty easy to get a hold of. Is the credit score the same as the FICO score or the different? That's the same. FICO is one of the algorithms that they use to come up with the credit score. So I have a question. Okay. I'm in the middle of just trying to do a dissolution, not a divorce, but... Okay. So recently we split the credit cards, mm -hmm. but prior to that, I was not using them. Okay. 
So I lowered uh, the amount that I could charge the allowable. Okay. Debt amount. Okay. Uh, this is on your card or, or it's it's the one that's in my name that he was able to charge on. Okay. And then there was one that was in his name that I could charge on. Okay. So we just kind of went back recently. But before that, I was trying to pay it back. And then he was using it, and I was like, well, I'm just going to lower the amount. And I found out that that can damage your credit. Sure, because it's lowering the amount of borrowing ability that you have. Yeah. So I don't know if I can go back on and request that it be, because they, they let me lower it, no problem. You know, sure. Online. Right. But you can certainly I ask. I don't know if you can. I would actually first go get a credit report and see, make sure that the record's clean. Also, too, do you know that he was removed as a, as a user of that account? Yeah, I just did that officially. I don't know if he's done that with me on his card, but okay. I've, I've cut both of them. So. Okay. You, you probably want to make sure that he has removed you from there because you don't want your information getting tarnished in the event he's not operating his cards responsibly. Yeah. So I would, I would ask for proof of that, that he's, he's, gotten rid, he's, he's removed you from those cards. Again, the first thing... Um, and again, this is where a credit card or a free credit report will help you. You can tell if you're still listed, if that obligation is still listed as available credit for you. I think you would definitely want to know that. Um, and then I give it a little bit of time, but then maybe reach out to the companies and look to get the increase back up again. Once you're sure they have yeah, When I talked to a rep over the phone, she said she couldn't do that, but I haven't I had the time to sit down and go on the website and see if I could raise it back up again. Sure. But whatever you do, I would get a copy of your report first. Okay. Um, and just make sure that there's nothing out there that is alarming or negative um, before you start that process. Okay. Okay? You ladies in the back, you're kind of quiet. Any questions? No. Okay. My husband and I's scores were different, mm -hmm. but everything we have is combined. So why would his be 50 lower than mine? And you've got exactly the same... The same. Everything's in both our names. Yeah. yeah. That's strange because my husband and I have the same thing too. His score is better than mine, which bugs the heck out of me. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes other things may play a role too. If you've a applied for credit and they've pulled your report, that a lot of times can, can impact your score in a negative way. Um, you know, if you applied for something he didn't, that might cause a difference. Um, and you have exactly the same accounts, you've laid the reports side by side to look at them. No, it's just everything's in both ways. I, well, again, there's another reason to get this, each of you to get your own reports and line them up and see if there's any differences between the two. Certainly worthwhile. Again, I like Credit Karma. It's, it's an easy, quick way to do it. Um, you can even get notifications when the score changes or, or some new information shows up. So. And do you have any questions? You can kind of quiet. Okay. <laughs> so everyone's going to go get copies of the credit report, right? Okay. All right, well, hey, I've enjoyed uh, speaking with you all. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed what I've brought to you. If you have any other questions, um, I'll see about getting you all a copy of my PowerPoint if you'd like it. And um, I, would, I, would, I wish you all the best, and thank you for coming to class. You're doing your best in yourselves by coming to something like this. You want as much as you can. It was recommended by a friend, and it was going to be beneficial, I think. Good. That's a very positive attitude. Um, another thing too, I just jumped in and helped out a little bit, as, as you know, with the financial literacy. Um, if you have children, grandchildren, get them started talking about credit earlier rather than later and understanding how important it is. Um, we talked a lot about financial literacy and getting the young ones involved. Um, these kids can understand stuff better than we give them credit for. Um, so there's a thing we have to pick the class that doesn't pick on out school, and you can pick like all kind of educational. Um, oh yeah. Kind of, but, he uses it for everything, but yeah. Okay. I'm like, you've got to take some of these classes now. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, as I as I've told my kids, you know, you gotta look at learning as you know, a lifetime process. Um, there's always something to learn. And um, kids respond when they see you taking that attitude. I'm learning how to get this off of me. So again, <laughs> here we go. Again, I'm, I've enjoyed presenting this to you. I wish you all the best of luck. What else are you taking today? Um, I got one more. I know that's the only reason because it's not Um, home buyers. Okay, good. Home oh, buyers. No. Just, you know, maybe six to nine months from now. Well, see, now you know what you need to do. You need 
get credit report worked out or you know at least up to speed on that. Learn about home buyers. And I think my friend, um, my coworker Julie, is teaching that. Oh, so good. she'll do a great job with you. And uh, again, if you ever need anything, I work at Porch Community Bank right down the street. Um, we, we we love taking care of our community. Okay. Thanks.